Welcome along to Film My Run, a special impromptu Film My Run live, uh, because <laughs> after a few failed attempts and lots of uh, Facebook messages back and forth, I have the elusive Holly Page uh, on the line from, is it Yorkshire you're in? Where are you? I am in Yorkshire, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, so, well, I'm in Holly, bed with a cold in Yorkshire. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> but, yeah. So, so we're on Holly's on Holly's briefest time with her parents, which she very rarely gets to do. She's not only is she ill, but I've dragged her <laughs> from her sick bed to chat to me for half an hour. So, introducing uh, Holly Page to you, everybody. Let me just get the uh, biggest picture of Holly up. Hold on, two seconds. Oh, we don't need big pictures. There, that look. Looks absolutely awful. Look, that's much. That's much better. I look awful. No, send it away. Send it away. <laughs> you can just Holly, tell my how lovely, are you? lovely voice. How are you? Um, yeah. Other than the cold, I'm totally fine. Um, um, yeah. But back in the UK, I went to to a sky race um, last weekend in Spain, um, and now I've got a week in the UK before I I head off again for quite some time. So um, yeah, it's nice to be back in the um, lovely rain and wind of Yorkshire. Because you're not well, I was going to say you're in the middle of, but you're you're coming towards the end of the sky running series, aren't you? Which you've which you've been taking part in this year. Yeah, yeah. So, um, oh, I missed the first part of the season because I broke my foot, which was pretty annoying. Oh, well done. Um, but um, yeah, um, but then uh, yeah, I last weekend was my fourth race of four, um, which you have to do for the sky running series, and then. Um, they have this kind of Sky Masters race next weekend. Um, but yeah, I've spent like every weekend doing races pretty much since as uh, since as soon as I was back running after the foot injury, um, which was too much sooner than I was supposed to be. Um, yeah, I just I'm a bit of a race addict, so um, well, th yeah, I, I think that that's part of the reason of why it's been difficult to track you down, uh, and apart from the fact that you also live in a van for most of the time where there's no internet yeah. signal. <laughs> yeah, I'm also a bit of a nomad, so I'm kind of here, there and everywhere. I, I, It's not that easy to track me. Well, it is sometimes OK to track me down, but I'm not very good at saying, yes, I will be free on Thursday at 7 p.m., for example, because I, I don't really know what I'm doing usually. Um I and you seem to be one of those people who um, I aspire to be, who is not a slave to Facebook. Oh, no, I'm not really on Facebook very often. I do use Instagram, though, now. It's apparently the the new way forwards. It's the um, thing to do. So, yeah, 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 I don't really check Facebook very often now. Um, but, yeah, I try not to do too much on social media. I mean, you have to do a bit for – so I run with Adidas and – um, they like me to have some social media presence, but yeah, there's, there's a bit too much of it nowadays. Um, I think it's good to just go and do things for their own sake rather than to go and post a selfie on top of a hill. Um, <laughs> but... <laughs> which is exactly what I would do. <laughs> uh, listen, let's, let's, let's go, um, let's go back for those of, for those people who, um, are not fully aware of, of Holly Page, uh, Holly Page uh, if you don't mind me saying, is literally one of, if not the UK's best current, best ultra runner, certainly over the shorter 50. Oh, you're the 50K queen, aren't you, really? I guess like 50 is probably, yeah, probably my sort of preferred distance. Um, I've not done very much over that. Um, so yeah, like 50K marathon distance. Um, I wouldn't call myself a queen, um, but yeah, I've done quite well in quite a lot of races. Um, but yeah, there's always faster people out there too. There are, yes, there are. Where did you start? I know that you you came come from a, a fell running background, like a, another yeah. good friend of mine, Kim Collison, is, is all about. Did you start your running career? Um, so I guess I started very early on. Um, my dad was a fell runner. Um, we've got come from quite an outdoorsy family. Um, so my parents were both teachers. So we spent kind of every family holiday and weekend out in the hills, um, either cheering my dad on in different races um, or like going walking and cycling, climbing, that sort of thing. So really outdoors. Um, 
and yeah so I guess from an early age I was I knew a lot about fell running um just from having been dragged up misty windy rainy hills to go and stand on top of a hill with a banana for my dad and hold it out and then he would just kind of come huffing and puffing past and not really so grunt at us but yeah he was he was he purely was he purely out for fun was he did he compete yeah yeah um he's extremely competitive um like and determined but not so talented a bit like me um we have to work very hard um to to do well um but yeah very, like competitive he ran for a club um but never like winning races or anything just kind of doing it um because he enjoyed it and also working very hard and being a, a good dad taxi service for me and my brother to all our different activities and things um so it, it does seem yeah. like a real kind of um good grounding for ultra for future ultra runners um especially sky running to be from that fell running world where uh, it i mean I, I i'm not from there at all but for the people i speak to r- you know racing short distances up really rugged terrain over the Yorkshire Dales or in Scotland or wherever it might be seems to be a really good grounding for for what you're doing now yeah definitely I mean from a a physical like running perspective um having that background in being able to descend on technical terrain just being used to it um I think definitely helps because I mean I have people like send me questions and things oh how can I get better at running downhill how can I get better at running on rocky terrain I mean the only way to do it is just to go out and do it there's not really there's not so you can't train for that in a gym or anything like that um so I guess yeah having done that from an early age definitely helps now in in the sky races um but then also I think um from like a mental side of things um it it really helps to have had that what my dad would call character building experiences as a child um so yeah we'd go on like long week long family bike rides across the UK and um yeah when it's october and it's windy and raining and you're on a mountain bike cuz the mileometer used to go to like zero <laughs> and i'd just be like i'm still pedaling i'm moving um so yeah i guess like all those experiences which i didn't necessarily appreciate at the time um well i didn't appreciate at the time but now i look back <laughs> with my rose tinted glasses and i'm like yeah okay that was well we um, i'd do the same to my kids we first met in in chamonix um this yeah. this year and i was with my children and my yes. kids are me, my children remember you saying to them about the fact that you used to run with your dad and go out and support your dad in races and and my kids have kept repeating that to me whenever whenever i say well let's, let's go for a run or you know are you going to come out with me oh no i don't want to oh but holly we used to go with her dad and i think <laughs> i'm hoping that you may have just Put something in their brains. Well, I hope so. I hope so because my kids are are maybe like you were when you were younger, didn't want to go out and don't want to go out in the cold and wet. No. No. (laughs) No. Um, So you you, you did, you you, you started off going out with your your parents and and then you started um, kind of fell running and you you did join, did you join a a, a club, Harry's? um, Yeah. So, yeah, so I started doing, like, when I got to about 11, um, I, my brother was a member of uh, Halifax Harrier, so I ended up joining that as well um, and started doing a little bit of everything, like cross-country, track and field, did the English fell running championships every year. Um, but, um, yeah, then I was like, that's probably when I took it the most seriously. I was, like, really competitive and we used to get, like, really At what age is this? Races. Um, this is like as a child, well, as an, as an, as a teenager, um, but I wasn't very good. Um, <laughs> but, um, uh, I was quite strong, but very slow. Um, so I would like look around at the start line of races to see whether or not there was someone who I could beat. Um, like, so that I wouldn't be last <laughs> rather than like looking around thinking, Oh, is there someone who might beat me? Um, but yeah, I was, I, I mean, I did that, but I also did lots of other things as well. Like I played football and, um, netball, hockey, and 
played the violin and did lot like I was kind of like that extracurricular kid that everyone hates um so yeah just kind of, it was like running was one part one part of life along with many other things um which I guess is also continued to be it's definitely not like the only thing I've got in life right now so we oh you see so you say you say it's not the only thing you've got in life I mean it does appear that you are running all the time Holly yeah what, social what, media when do you life. find time to do anything else <laughs> Well, I have a, a job as well, um, but I just, it doesn't make for very interesting Instagram stories. Um, what is your job? Because so, actually it does, it does sound quite interesting because you, a lot of the things I read about you, is you, you had to go to Nepal for your job or, or some other country for your job. What, what do you do? Yeah, sadly not Nepal for my job. Uh, mostly it's been like African countries. Um, and yeah, I work in international development. Um, so for an organization who run programs, uh, mostly for UK government. So like Department for International Development, Foreign Office, or like World Bank programs. Um, and yeah, so previously I was living out in South Africa and I was working as a project manager um, across lots of Southern African countries. Um, with various uh, government officials, which um, is challenging sometimes. <laughs> um, I would imagine. But very um, good experiences. Um, and uh, yeah, so I did that for a few years. And then um, now I'm still working with the same organization, but on a different basis. So I can be based remotely, uh, which is really helpful. So like since last year, I've been able to work wherever I've got Wi-Fi and a plug socket um, or I can connect my phone to my laptop to be able to work. Okay. Um, so this, so this so, now kind of links into my image of you traveling the UK and and the rest of the world in a, in a van on your own, just kind of chilling out and enjoying life and doing the odd race when you fancy it. Um, yeah, but not so much of the chilling out because like, in between <laughs> the running, I'm, the time. I'm working. Yeah, and yeah, I do some translation work as well. I speak quite a few different languages. So that's like something that's quite good to be able to do remotely yeah. as well. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's it's cool. I've had to work quite hard to get to that stage where where I can have like be able to do that. Um, but yeah, it's definitely, definitely helpful for, for my current situation in like being being this eternal nomad um it doesn't however help me to make a decision as to where i want to ultimately live um so i'm no. just continuing to be a nomad um but, but that's and your first for, your first ultra while. was abroad as well wasn't it when you your first ultra race was in canada am i right oh yeah um yeah that was like 2015 um yeah i just i'd been working for a an education charity in london um which i really enjoyed but then decided okay, life's too short. I need, I was like constantly looking at Google maps and ended up, um, going out to, to Canada and buying a secondhand bike from someone and cycling down to Mexico. Um, which was, you've cool. no fear, um, but <laughs> I have this fear, but it's just challenging what people say to you. I guess lots of people say like, Oh, it's impossible. You can't possibly, for example, cycle through the Mexican desert as a woman on your own, but you can and i'd like to, i like to prove that you can do these things fantastic um but yeah that ultra in canada was just like i was i was there and i saw a poster for it on like maybe the thursday before the race on the saturday um so contacted the organizers and managed to get an entry for that and did that but yeah i hadn't really trained for it it's like most of the things i do i'm not really like some people spend a lot of time planning and doing things properly. I don't really. I just tend to wing most of the things. But I let's do. just put this in yeah. perspective, though. So you hadn't you saw this race a couple of days before. You you hadn't um, run an ultra before. You hadn't trained for it. You came second. Mm -mm. I've been you living came in second, London. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, I wasn't too, I think I was like a minute off the winner or something. I just, I set off really slowly and then got stronger as I went on. Were um, you annoyed that you were second? Yeah, like, no, no, I'm never annoyed to like, I'm usually just happy, like, cause I'm not, I'm never sure. Like, I, I think it's important not to have expectations when you go into a race. So like for me, that one, for example, was just, oh, cool. There's a race. I'll do it. Like, <laughs> I'm quite happy for someone who's actually prepared for it properly to beat me like that's fair. I think that's fair I, I guess um, so and 
Yeah. But obviously, I mean, um, I'm kind of trying to get at the, the, your, your, your competitive edge and your mental strength already kind of showing through um, in your very first ultra, coming second and only a minute off first. Yeah, 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 I guess so. Um, it's more the mental strength thing, I think. Well, I guess competitive too, but like I started off very non-competitive. It was just like me seeing if I can run that far. Um, and once I realised that I could, then I was like, oh, okay, maybe I should actually go a bit faster. <laughs> um, so what prompted but... you, what pushed you on further? Because um, th there must be a point at which, um, okay, you took it seriously as a teenager, as a, as a, a child, um, but there must have been a point at where you said, right, well, I could actually be quite good at this and I should, did you ever say something like I should look at getting a sponsor or I should look at trying to enter some bigger races and, and, and get some wins? Did that ever happen? Yeah, so I, I guess like when I, when I was living in South Africa, I did the, they had like a South, the South African sky running series. So I did that and I never expected to do well, but I actually like won all of those races like quite easily um which i wasn't i never like didn't expect at all um and so then whilst i was there i went back um back to europe and did a couple of races um like some of the the sky running like world series races which again i hadn't really prepared for because i was living behind an electric fence in south africa and, like aiming by doing like step machine on in the gym um or going on the track or something um but yeah, did a few start, did a few races, um, and and got a bit of a taste for for the like European mountain running scene, um, and then thought, okay, well, I want to like have a go at doing this World Series, um, but um, yeah, being based in South Africa was quite difficult because yeah, I couldn't just fly back for a race, um, and with work, I was having to like I didn't have a lot of say on where where i would be so it might be like okay well tomorrow you need to fly to tanzania or you need to go to malawi or wherever it might be um but that meant i couldn't really do much forward planning um but yeah so like the first races i did in europe i wasn't wasn't great i just i set off very slowly and didn't really have any confidence in in how well i might be able to do or like what my body was capable of um but then i guess it's the same with anything like the more you do the more you realize um like oh, actually, like running 40K or whatever isn't that bad. Like I can push myself for that whole time. Um, so it's just, yeah, it's just kind of learning that. And then I think as I've learned that, um, I've started to be able to do better in races, like, yeah, setting off a lot harder and, and having that confidence to push from the the outset, knowing that your body can can cope or at least your mind can make your body cope. Um, I, um, I have only recently started to do... Um, some quite scary sky ridges and I am not a fan of heights. I have to say, I'm not a fan of heights. I'm not a fan of, of climbing rocks without safety ropes. Do you have any fear? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I'm scared of lots of things. Um, but in terms of like this fear of heights, like I don't get a fear of heights never during a race. I think actually it's quite like, Races give you that kind of, well, I guess it's the competition, but also the kind of adrenaline side of things. Um, whereas if, so if you walk a race route, maybe the week before, um, you would often think like, whoa, I wouldn't dare go along this. And then it's amazing yeah. what you do in it. Or, or sometimes I've done, I've walked afterwards what I'd done the day before in a race. And it's like, wow, how on earth did I do that? Because <laughs> um, you yes, actually have time I totally to stop get and that. look around you and and look and see that see the big drops and things. But whereas if you're in a race, um, you you often don't notice it. Um, I must say though, like so, like my downhill running has actually got worse as I've got older. Um, I think I've learned to be a bit more sensible, or I've had so many falls and things that um, I'm I'm kind of more more aware of the damage that can be done when you fall over. Um, whereas, um, when I was a junior, I just used to go hell for leather down the hill and without a care in the world. Um, so well, I kind I of wish I had, I think, you know, what I'm going to ask next then. So this running downhill business, um, tell me about your glacier incident. Okay. Yeah. Well, that wasn't actually running. Um, I was, um, I was in, in Chamonix, um, 
Well, it's 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 a, even a longer story than that. I was never supposed to be in Chamonix. I was supposed to be at a race. Yeah, you were supposed to be Greece. somewhere else, and the plane didn't. Yeah. you missed your plane, plane or something. Yeah, I was in Ethiopia. Yeah, the plane didn't happen. Anyway, I found myself in Chamonix unexpectedly, um, and um, Wes was invited to go at Mont Blanc with a few friends slash heroes of mine. <laughs> um, oh, okay, I, I thought you'd gone for a run up 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 on Mont Blanc. No, 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 okay. no. I don't. I think. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not that stupid. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of people go and do like take the mountains a bit too much for granted. Um, yeah. No, I was I was up there with with people. We'd gone up, and then the weather was bad, so we actually turned around and um, and decided not to go up to the top, which was the right decision. Um, but then on the way down, coming down one of the glaciers, I I slipped and and fell like quite a long way. <laughs> I didn't used to be able to talk about it. I'd get like quite upset because it was one of those moments where you're kind of thinking, oh, the end is nigh. Um, but anyway, I crashed into some boulders at the bottom and tore up my legs. But yeah, I was very lucky I didn't hit my back or my head or anything. Um, but that was right at the beginning of my 2017 season. So the race I was supposed to be going to was in Greece. It was uh, the first sky running race I was going to do. Um, but yeah, so that meant I ended up coming back to the UK in a wheelchair and then like <laughs> having to learn to walk again. Oh, um, which was not not the best way to start my season um and especially like i guess i'd um because i i was in based in south africa and like um it's very hard to train there when you're living in a city and i'd like put in so much effort to go to like 5 a.m spinning classes before going to the office and you know just getting hard, working hard to get fit and then to kind of lose that all was was a bit of a shame but equally yeah. I was so close to losing everything you know I, I I didn't I wasn't focused on oh I'm not fit anymore it was more like wow I'm glad I'm alive <laughs> more than more than anything else and it taught me lesson again yeah not to not to take anything for granted and that um yeah accidents accidents can happen and it's it's important to try and minimize those but um yeah I mean after that experience I was like reluctant to kind of go back into the mountains um questioning it but i made some mistakes and i think um yeah i've learned from it as well and so um, do you think do you think that has held you back at all in terms of uh maybe your your downhill running um i know you say you weren't running oh, when you definitely. fell but yeah yeah um yeah i mean cuz i i slid it, i actually slid like a very long way like uncontrollably i couldn't get my ice axe in and um and so now when i find myself on a similar terrain then I, I i like have a bit of a panic attack i, I mean i get over it but um i did a race last year with a friend um the monte rosa sky race do you know what? Um, i was literally about to ask you because i know <laughs> that the, the monte rosa goes over a glass a glacier doesn't it yeah 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 um yeah you have to come down a big glacier um and it's really steep and you have to slide like there's no way to get down it this there's like one very very steep section and they put a fixed rope on it but it doesn't really help you um and there's other sections without a rope and yeah you do that race like with that so you're roped to your partner much much of the way yeah. um but without an ice axe it's it's italy so anything goes um like safety <laughs> kind of goes out the window but yeah that was I actually didn't have the best time <laughs> sliding down that glacier, but um, it kind of brings back not so nice memories. And again, this year I was um, like on a another glacier in the Dolomites earlier on in the year, um, and um, yeah, had a similar like, oh my gosh, like I was, I was like, I'm scared of sli of that kind of um, just losing control, um, yeah. just because I guess it's happened before. But it's not necessarily a bad fear; it probably keeps me safe. So. Um, Yes, yeah. I guess I guess a little bit of fear is not is not a bad thing. Yeah. Um, so so move it. When did you when did you pick up Adidas as a sponsor? Because that that has that happened quite recently. Um. So just in January, um, I did all of last year without a sponsor. Um, well, no one would sponsor me at the end of 2017. Um. So I was like, okay, fine, I'll do it all Rubbish. myself. So I just hitchhiked around to all my races continued working all the time um and then won the sky running series so that was um kind of brought a bit of interest <laughs> yeah um but yeah it was quite like well i mean it, it meant that i was racing with no pressure it was quite nice to you know other people have um 
have had everything paid for and staying in a hotel or whatever and I was just there yeah. with my tent like <laughs> on the start yes. line in my old shorts and things um and, but and yeah when, I quite when we met you I were you like were that. you were standing next to somebody who's probably had all that that Luis Alberto Hernando when he was, <laughs> yeah. you were signing autographs and I yeah it it must be great to suddenly find yourself with a little bit more kind of financial freedom possibly to go and do some of the things yeah. that you want to do yeah I mean so like I mean I've been working for quite a long time now so I I had the money to do things it's just kind of my way of traveling or being from Yorkshire um <laughs> means that I try and do everything as cheaply as possible um but um sorry um, it's fine just reminding me um, that you've got a cold <laughs> um but um what was I saying uh yeah no it's really nice to have a team now like um we have a, some camps together and like have a week here and there together and to like it, I've met some really nice people as well it's great yeah. like that's the great thing about running you kind of always meeting great people um to go and do things with um and yeah, so it's nice to have that feeling of support. Um, um, obviously, not just financial, but yeah, the people as well. Um, and it's nice to to be recognised to have that as like to someone for someone to say, okay, well, like yeah, well done for what you have done like these sure. last few years. Um, and obviously, it's not going to last forever. <laughs> so it's nice to to try and make the most of it whilst I whilst I can and um, kind of take opportunities when they when they're presented to me. So, um, going from kind of getting really good results, like firsts and second in the, in the sky runner series, in the trail running world championships, doing, doing distances between 20 and 50 K whose idea was it? What prompted you to suddenly, well, maybe it wasn't sudden, uh, go for, um, the CCC, the, the hundred kilometer UTMB race, uh, this last month so- or so. It was no one's idea other than mine. Um, basically, I, I had enough ITRA points to have a free entry. Um, so I I entered back way back in December um, just because I got an email saying like, oh, if you'd like to enter a UTMB race, you can. So I was like, OK, I just clicked and it didn't cost anything. Um, so anyway, I had I entered that. And then um, Adidas were quite keen for people to do lots of the different UTMB races, but I said all along, no, no, I'm not doing one um, because I was racing the weekend before and the weekend afterwards as well, like races which were more important to me. Yeah. Um, but actually um, with Adidas, we all we all were in Chamonix that week. So I knew I would be in Chamonix, um, but just kind of having a training week or like cheering on my teammates and things. Um but then actually the week before, so the race I had the week before was a sky race in Zermatt. Um, and I managed to smack my head on a rock um, and got helicoptered off the course. Um, oh, no. So, um, Is this a pattern? I, got, I, I had like, I had concussion and um, yeah, but my legs were not, weren't tired because I hadn't done the downhill. Um, okay. So then this was kind of like in my mind, like, oh, I have concussion, but maybe maybe in five days or whatever, I could run the CCC having not done any training for it. Um, so yeah, so then I was like, t- like I couldn't decide. And it was only on the Tuesday before the race on the Friday that I was like, okay, I'm going to do it. So then I had to find all the kit. I had to like get my friend to sign my medical certificate. She is a doctor. <laughs> um, and um, yeah, it was a bit of a bit of a nightmare trying to get everything sorted. Um, and then um like two days before the race, I started with like a stomach upset, but I didn't really think anything of it. Um, and then started the race and I told myself I would only stop like, cause I hadn't trained for it. I was like, well, you know, it wasn't like a season goal or anything. I would stop if I felt like that my knees were going or like, you know, I didn't, I wasn't prepared to injure myself. Um, yeah. but like stomach problems was, that didn't that wasn't in my categories of of you have to stop if you get this um Just get it so done. basically yeah. like yeah but like from i'd been to the toilet well the non-existent toilets um <laughs> four times in the first 10k um and it was just absolutely awful like so my first 100k it turns out i had a stomach virus um and i like i could hardly run um it was <laughs> it, it was pretty tough but um, you did finish and, 
Yeah, I finished and I was top 10 even. So uh, that was quite a surprise. But yeah, I mean, any 100Ks I do in the future should hopefully be considerably quicker and, um, and um, yeah, and more, more is of it a something, running experience. Is it something you would survival. like to do? Uh, I mean, that doing that made me realise that I can do that distance. Yeah. And, I mean, my legs were actually fine afterwards, but I think that's just because I was not going as quickly as I would in a normal You looked race. annoyingly fresh um, on the finish line, I have to say. <laughs> I actually felt good. So, like, the last 20K was when I felt quite good. Um, and, like, I, lo- I then looked at my splits and they were, like, faster than all the UTMB men other than Pau. <laughs> um, yeah. So that was, like... I mean, yeah, they'd run a lot. They'd run further, but still. Um, I have to take some positive... Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, um, so yeah, I mean, yeah, I felt totally fine at the end. I, could, I felt like I could go around again, but that was just, I think maybe I had a lot of caffeine gels at the last aid yeah, station don't, or something. Don't say that. Listen, um, I finished, <laughs> I finished about 10 hours after you and it was like the end of my world. I was completely dead. So it just, you just make me feel bad. <laughs> it's all relative. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, um, you're, 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 you're kind of making a pattern of, of talking about times when you fall over and, and crack your skull or, or nearly die because you fell yeah, over quite badly at Ring of, of my... Steel, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, I just got stitches taken out of my leg last week from that. Um, so we, not so the first I saw time you... I've had stitches before in my leg as well. I saw you again when I, uh, I attempted the Ben Nevis Ultra up in Scotland yes, two weeks yeah. ago. Failed at that as well, <clears throat> but we won't talk about that. Um, and the day after... You did the Ring of Steel Sky Race. Yes, yeah. And um, yeah, so that was part of the Golden Trail World Series. Yes. I'm not really good at making decisions, so I just do all the races. Do are. whatever. Um, <laughs> do all the series, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but then I fell in a bog on the last downhill and um, smacked my leg. And I actually didn't even realise it needed stitching until I was on my way to the cave. It looked nasty. Um, it, I mean, it did, but I hadn't really, I tried not to look at it. Um, and I f- went past the medical tent on the way to the Cayley and um, thought, oh, I'll just get them to just clean it up properly. And they looked at it and they were like, no, you're no. not going to Cayley. You need to go to A&E in Fort William. Um, so then they stitched up. Um, but hey-ho, it's fine. Um, Guys, if nice you, if, if, listen, the, 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 the moral of this story is... Don't become a sky runner. <laughs> Don't do fell running because you will. Yeah, at some point you will fall over badly and hurt yourself, or fall down yeah, a I long way. I fall over way. in like the easiest, the easiest points. Um, yeah. Holly, I mean, what have you got coming up? I've done it on a walk. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> next week I am um, racing the Sky Masters, um, which Woo-hoo! is the last like sky race of the year which they've they've made a new format this year it sounds a bit odd but anyway yeah race the sky masters um and then i go straight from there to nepal for this final of the golden trail series um and then i i'm going to stay out in nepal um and do like uh, two weeks of trekking um and then run the manaslu um stage race uh which, which looks pretty cool uh, then I'm going to, like, on the way back from Nepal, I have to come back through the Middle East, so I'm going to do UTMB Oman. Um, oh, wow. Which I had an invite to, so I was like, well, I've never been to Oman. Um, yeah, let's why do not it. go visit there? And, I mean, I have to run a 50K, but that's fine if it gets me a trip to Oman. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and then from there, I'm going to Argentina, um and racing the el cruce which is like a three-day stage race down in patagonia um and then because you've done costa rica only have a one-way you? flight yes yeah i did the coastal challenge in february which was a great experience um yeah. so i really enjoyed that kind of stage race format you get to know lots of different people and um like way more than you would in just like a normal race where people come along and then they go home afterwards um yeah, and it make it's kind of yeah, it's just nice vibes, and most of the stages usually are not very not too long, so you're finished about lunchtime, and you've got the rest of the day to enjoy it, um, and then after that, I think I'll stay out in South America um, for a little while and um, hopefully get up get up a few peaks. It's kind of a good mountaineering time um, in the winter, um, but yeah, nothing nothing 
hundred percent planned yet. Um, I just have the one way flight to Argentina and I'll take my laptop as well so I can do a bit of work. <laughs> um, do you, but, do you write, um, do you blog, do you blog about your running? Um, no, I'm so like fast running, um, is an online running website and they, I, they've asked like every month I write a, like a monthly update for them. Okay. Um, this year. So I've been doing that. Um, but otherwise, no, I just like put. So we, we can keep Instagram. up with you there a little bit. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. So there's more in depth on the yeah. fast running blog. Um, and then, um, yeah, on Instagram, I, I Instagram, post which also, I think it automatically posts to Facebook, but then I, I don't okay. see, I don't see Facebook so often. Um, yeah. I, I think I see your Instagram. I click on them. I see your Instagram on Facebook. I think once it's been posted, yeah, and you're okay, you, you're yeah. you're totally responsible for your own Instagram posts. Adidas don't vet them and and say yes, you can do you can post that or you can't post that or. No, no, I just do you. my own thing. I mean, occasionally yeah. I get like a a WhatsApp from the manager with certain things circled and question marks, but oh, okay. um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just it's just me. Um, which is nice. Adidas is very good with that. They're, they're very flexible and yeah, yeah. Um, like they let me race what I want to race and um, and mostly post what I want to post if I'm 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 saying nice things, so it's fine. <laughs> so listen, if you if you have um, not followed Holly's adventures before, uh, you can see from this half hour or so what an amazing life Holly leads. Um, so go and follow her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, at the moment, perhaps not right now, in her parents' home in bed with a cold. But listen, uh, I, honestly, you you inspire so many people, and and I I am in awe of your adventures, and of your seemingly natural, but obviously not natural. We've worked very hard to to achieve some of the the results that you've achieved, and it's amazing to watch now now that I'm fully immersed in the Holly Page experience. Uh, it, it is amazing to to watch the the things that you do every every week. There's a new race that you're that you're doing on on Facebook or Instagram, and and some of the photos that you post are incredible. If it's not a bloody leg, it's a a beautiful view from somewhere. <laughs> yeah, prefer the beautiful views. Absolutely, I'll, I'll try and get more of those and fewer of the bloody legs. <laughs> Holly, yeah. thank you so much for for spending the time to talk to me today, and I'm I'm glad we eventually yeah, caught thank up. Thank you. And uh, yeah. hopefully um, I will see you at, at, at a race at, at some point, race. perhaps yeah. not in Argentina or South Africa, uh, but maybe some uh, some fell in Scotland somewhere. Yeah, they're the best ones anyway. <laughs> None of this commercial mumbo jumbo. <laughs> Good old fell race. <laughs> Holly Page, thank you very much and uh, take care. We'll see you. Uh, we'll see you very soon. Guys, uh, stay tuned. Um, over actually on the uh, Film My Run Facebook page, but also on the Zwift Live page uh, in about 50 minutes, Wednesday workout live on Zwift on this treadmill. Uh, we'll be doing intervals. So please come and join me then. I did miss that comment from somebody just flashed up on the screen there. Apologize for that. Uh, thank you again, Holly. Uh, take care, guys. We'll see you again for another Film My Run live very soon. Let's wait. Bye bye, Holly. Bye. Oh, why won't it go away? You've got to go away, oh. Holly. I, no, go away. Oh, I